here today with Paul Davidson, the Professor Emeritus and Chair of Political Excellence at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're here to talk about many things, including his book, The Keynes Solution, The Path to Global Prosperity. Welcome, Paul. Uh, glad to be here, Rob. It's a bit uh, uncomfortable to hear things like chair of political excellence <laughs> and a path to global prosperity. Those right. things seem as far removed from the reality that we perceive. Well, that's why I, I can it was imagine. an academic title, and <laughs> 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 yeah, which I was supposed to pursue uh, leads to getting political economic excellence and, and prosperity. That's right. See, it was, it was uh, not necessarily be in Washington to, to get, get it done. It wasn't a demonstrated fact. That's it was right. a prospective agenda. That's right, basically. Yeah. Well, you've written a lot over the years. I know you were one of the uh, founders with Sidney Weintraub of the Journal of Post Keynes in Economics. That's correct. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the building blocks in the vision of Keynes that you've brought forward. You talked about that there, in, you wrote a book, I believe, for a, a series uh, on John Maynard Keynes. That's right. That title. And you talked in that book about there are three basic assumptions or axioms that uh, classical economists would hold on to, and Keynes did not. Right. Keynes, in the general theory, said classical economists were like Euc uh, Euclidean geometers in a non-Euclidean world, and when they saw parallel lines uh, intersecting, they rebuked them for, for intersecting. And he said what had to happen was the axiom of parallels had to be thrown out, and the non-Euclidean geometry had to be incurred. And he said, this is what is required in economics today. This was 1936. It says everything's a substitute for everything else. Uh, and that's particularly important when you think about financial assets versus real capital assets. He insists that they're not substitutable. And then he threw out something he called uncertainty. He didn't know this was an axiom that the statistician would call the ergodic axiom which said that the future cannot be predicted from probability distributions of the past. Mm -hmm. So when you throw out those three axioms, you get a completely different vision of how a capitalist economy operates. And that was what Keynes was trying to do. He was setting up a new economic theory about macroeconomics, about monetary theory. You've got to remember, prior to the general theory, he wrote two volume work called A Treatise on Money. Mm -hmm. And he was primarily a monetary theorist. And uh, again, I know Roy Harrod, who was the a, a first biographer of Keynes, and Roy and I used to talk about what uh, Keynes said, and he was very insistent that in his lectures, Keynes would use words that are only used in financial markets, uh, economists never heard of, backwardation, contango, which mm -hmm. is financial, and that's why he, he would give lectures on monetary theory using backwardation and contango concepts, which I then introduced in Money in the Real World, didn't go anywhere with economists, but again, it seemed to me it was the way financial markets really operated. Mm -hmm. And I've been trying for 40, 50 years to try and convince my professional colleagues, this is what we ought to be doing in monetary theory and financial theory, rather than the classical financial monetary theory. Mm -hmm.